Hello, everyone. <sighs> I am here to talk about divine partnership because I'm feeling so grateful and so in awe and also a little bit intimidated and frightened by this journey. <laughs> yes, I am in a divine, beautiful partnership with, as you know, J-Hode and uh, Oh, you may not know that. Well, he's my, I have a boyfriend. His name is J-Hode. And I just want to share my journey with you guys. And um, it's a bit, it's, yeah, it's an, intimate, it's an intimate sharing, but I'm feeling really inspired to share this because I know that deep down so many, so many people desire divine partnership. They want to be in, in sacred union with their beloved. And um, it's... Uh, it's such an incredible way of, of raising your level of consciousness of it's intense of staying on path because if you're not on path, if you're not loving yourself, if you are not facing your fears, if you're running away from anything that is waiting to be shifted, your partnership will be a mirror to that. Your partnership can bring up triggers, fears, resistance. And the journey, if, if you want to make it out to the other side and keep evolving us as a couple, is to meet these resistance, to meet these fears, and to do the work, to keep transmuting the fears, the triggers that, that, cut, that come up in, in the partnership. Because Jay has been a mirror for me. He's been a powerful powerful mirror for me and sometimes you know i i feel things towards him that i'm like wait is this really about him or is this about me and when you are in divine partnership your partner is a mirror is that a beautiful mirror for your soul for where you're at on your journey for where you're at in terms of your alignment and your connection to your connection to source connection to love i mean the core of relationships is love right so where are you where are you at with love that yeah that, that's a question but it's also my partnership with jay always reflects to me where am i at with love where am i at with loving myself where am i at with loving others and if i cannot feel the love for jay flowing through me openly fluently if i cannot share his happiness if i cannot share his pain if i cannot if i'm if the way that i'm treating him is a reflection of where i'm at with myself and my past and my soul and it's just constant like reflections so when i'm open hearted and things are flowing well in our relationship it's usually a reflection of how th how well things are flowing in my relationship with myself and in my relationship with God and with the and with the divine. Now if I start neglecting myself, if I start overworking, if I stop putting myself first, if I start becoming unconscious. If I start letting other energies in the world take over me, it shows the first place that it's so obvious that it's shown is in my relationship with Jay. And and this is this is divine partnership. This is you know he's he's a mirror, and um, oftentimes if I'm feeling like I'm not meeting him in the heart space or there's a block in my heart, it's usually to do with me. It's rarely often is it to do with him. It's to do with me, my connection to myself, and it's it's natural for the ego to think, oh well. I mean, for example, if I'm really feeling a bit frustrated that I'm not seeing him as often as I would like to, if I'm not feeling connected to him, it's it's really natural for the ego, for the mind to think, oh, well, this, this means I need to see him more. This means I need to have more of his attention. This means I need to call him more. But he's, he's, but that's still external outsourcing on, on, on some level. That's still external external outsourcing. Yes, he's my partner. Yes, it's natural for me to desire him, for me to want to be with him more. But I stop and I question, 
is it him that I really need to be more connected to or is it me? And am I running away from myself by running to him? And this is a difference between being in a, yeah, being in a normal relationship and seeing each other as often as you want and following your emotions and just following your emotions, following your triggers, following your reactions, following, following what you want and and going out and it's external from you like going outside to get it right and yeah my ego really wants to see him more and lately you know like I've there were times where I've been wanting to see him more but then if I really if I do the opposite of what my ego wants and I realized from a place of higher awareness and consciousness that, well, have I been spending enough time with myself? Have I been loving myself as much as I, I can? And so with this awareness, I've, um, I've, what, what I do um, is I focus, I go within myself first. I go within myself and I see how, is, is my cup, Am I coming today with a full cup or am I expecting him to fill up my cup? And and when I come to him with an empty cup, I'm never satisfied because that em- the only thing that can fill that cup is not actually him. It's me, it's God, it's my soul, it's deepening my connection to myself. Um, it's really often can he do anything around about that. It's not his role to fill up my cup. It's his role to love me though. And, and just to be a representation of love and I do the best I can to represent love to him. Um, but in a, in a divine partnership, you know, the reason why it's not codependent is, is because instead of looking for the other, to the other partner to, to get our cups filled and our needs filled, we look to ourselves first and, and we get really radically honest with ourselves and we observe our thoughts we take note of, well, am, am I vibing on frequency of love or am I in fear? Because if I'm in fear, my partner's not going to be able to shift that for me. The only thing that can shift that is me and choosing to take powerful steps towards love. Choosing to do the inner work to alchemize the, the fear into love. Otherwise, the fear just gets projected into the relationship. Does this make sense? Let me know if this makes sense. Just comment down below. <laughs> So I wanted to share my journey with um, coming back to love again and again and, and what that looks like to me. And this is what brings us closer together and this is what creates a healthy polarity is that whenever I'm feeling like I'm needing more love and I, I'm my mind, like I'm like, oh, Jay, yeah, I just want to see him more. I want to talk to him more. Before I reach out, before I'd make an effort to see him, I get really honest with myself. Am, am I am I really loving myself deeply right now? Like, am I actually in love with myself? Am, am I in a place of love or fear? And if I'm in a place of fear, then I will do the inner work to alchemize it. For example, breath work. That's really powerful at alchemizing it. I might talk to a therapist. Um, I meditate, and if I'm and I meditate until it shifts. Um, I commune with God through studies, through attending gatherings where the divine is there to support us, to move through us, to help us alchemize fear into love. And oftentimes, very often, after going through the alchemical journey of doing my inner work and doing my inner self and connecting with myself and coming back to love within myself and filling up my own cup first, I don't have any desire or I have no craving or yearning or feel any need to contact him anymore I feel no need to see him more than I already am seeing him because ultimately we never need anyone outside of us that's an illusion but it's the conditioning of the mind you know like every time we choose to see someone regularly we are conditioning our like we're creating patterns in, in our mind so when we don't see them as often it creates discomfort because we've created a belief within ourselves that that this person is a part of our lives and we need them to be you know part of, we need them to be in our lives or to be a part of our lives for things to go normal and for things to run smoothly and when 
we go a long period of the time without seeing our beloved, yeah, the body is gonna feel it's gonna feel uncomfortable. So I I see Jay once or twice a week, and um. And it creates so much space for me to, not always. I mean, I'm quite a busy person, but it does create more space for me to really make sure that I'm I'm coming to him with a, with a full cup. That I'm coming to him with pure intentions. That I'm coming to him from a healthy place. And um, we're both so busy nowadays, anyway, that we can't really see each other more than we'd like to. <sighs> But it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's setting up a really beautiful foundation where it's a foundation of self-love. It's a foundation of self-fulfillment. It's a foundation of connection to self, connection to our higher purpose before the relationship. And so I wanted to share that this is how the dynamic in my relationship works. And it's not easy because sometimes I really want the, sh the sh short way out of my pain and discomfort when it shows up. And I'd much rather like, yeah, you know, why can't I just go out and see him or call him and have my cup filled and go about my day and continue with my day. But I've been through um, enough, enough relationships to know that that's not the healthiest way to go about it, even though it's instinct it's in instinctual. Um, it's not the healthiest way because I'm outsourcing that's a form of outsourcing and i call myself out on it and this is the thing like living in a in a conscious way where you're just so fucking aware of yourself and you're aware of your thoughts you know when you're living from a place of love and you know when you're living from a place of fear and to come from someone or anything to do anything from a place of fear is not it's not okay like not in my world it's not okay because planting one action taking one step in in the direction of fear creates a ripple effect in our timelines in our reality in our psyche that is connected to fear and so it's not health it's it creates like a it's a risky portal you know it's it's like it's it's risky because it can create unhealthy habits that are based on fear and so the the key here is to break those fearful habits to break to stop ourselves from acting from a place of fear and instead of projecting 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 which is what a lot of couples may, may do in a relationship we need to go inwards and reflect 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 and question 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 and shift 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 back into love and then once you're back into love and you take one step into love from a place of love it creates a beautiful ripple effect and it, it creates a future reality that is aligned, that it's in alignment with love. Does this make sense? Again, please let me know if this makes sense. <laughs> I just wanted to share my journey, my alchemical journey in divine partnership. And um, I hope that, you know, inspires you or raises some questions as to what you think healthy relating looks like and what do you think the purpose of these relationships are. Um, because for me, I mean, right now in, in, in divine partnership, I call it divine because it's so it's so based on the principles of love. It's so based on the spiritual principles that I live by that have been, um, yeah, that have been for, for me, formulated based on a lot of spiritual experiences I've had and based on God and 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 so this is this is why i go about it in this way and i'm really grateful um that you know jay is able to meet me in, in that and he's always calling me out on my fears and he's so patient when i am not in love when i'm not in the space of love and i'm trying to work through it. i'm trying to work through my shit i'm trying to like come back home to myself and he just holds space for that but he's not he's not the solution he's not my home and um but if I didn't have him in my life, I would have one less incredible, powerful feedback, biofeedback in my life. Because he's always going to be a mirror and a, a form of feedback reflecting to me where am I at with myself. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for that. It's so much more fun. The work is so much more fun that way. And the outcome of it is just so beautiful. I get to share life and share love with another person. 
And um, yeah, we're created for relationships. You know, we're created to we blossom and we bloom in relationships. And we, and the pleasure that comes with relationships, the juiciness, the uh, oh, it's so it's so worth it. It's so worth it. It's um the cherry on top. It's a little bit reward. You know, it feels like a reward. Um, for staying conscious and staying in the place of love. <laughs> Anyway, thank you. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, if this brought up anything for you, please let me know. And if you are someone who is ready for divine partnership, uh, reach out to me because I've got some powerful steps that you can take. Um, and I also offer sessions for people who want to step, get themselves to a place where they can attract the divine partnership. And um yeah it's it's beautiful and it's all about well how can you go how, how can you become your divine partner first before you welcome someone else to a space because if you can navigate things with yourself you can surely navigate it with another partner and um yeah so if you're interested and if you're feeling ready please reach out book in a call with me um it's yeah i am excited <laughs> thank you for watching this video thank you for connecting with me please comment like share it if you think it's relevant to anyone in your field all right much love Mwah.